In this video, I'll explain when to use a z-score and when to use a t-score. I'll show you the z-score and t-score formulas. I'll also explain why you can always use the t-score. t-scores and z-scores are both used in hypothesis testing. However, the decision to use a t-score or a z-score in your hypothesis testing causes a great deal of confusion. If you're taking a statistics class, you'll be using the z-score a lot more than the t-score. But in real life, you'll be using the t-score more often. In order to be able to use a z-score, you must know the standard deviation of the population, and your sample size should be above 30. If you can't meet both of those requirements, use the t-score. This diagram to the right is a flowchart that will walk you through the steps. If you do not know the population standard deviation, that's sigma, the flowchart sends you straight away to use the t-score. If you do know it, then the question becomes, is your sample size above 30? If it is, you can use the z-score. If not, use the t-score. Notice I've been using words like should and want to and rule of thumb. That's because there isn't a universal rule for when to use a t-score. In most cases, this chart will be sufficient, but there are dozens of textbooks who have slightly different interpretations of the rule of thumb, so you want to check with those to make sure they're not suggesting something different. In real life, it's more common just to use the t-distribution as we usually don't know sigma. I have a quote here from Meyer et al's textbook. They say, when a sample has more than 30 observations, the normal distribution can be used in place of the t-distribution. You can always use a t-score. The use of the t-distribution is theoretically sound for all sample sizes, but you can choose to use the normal distribution if your sample size is above 30. So what is the z-score? Technically, z-scores are a conversion of individual scores into a standard form. This conversion allows you to more easily compare different types of data. This distribution is based on your knowledge about the population standard deviation and mean. The resulting z-score will tell you how many standard deviations from the mean your result is. For example, if you get a z-score of 1, that tells you your one standard deviation from the mean. We can use the z-table, as well as the empirical rule, which is that 68, 95, 99.7 rule, to figure out what percentage of the population will fall below or above a certain result. The z-score is calculated using this formula. Mu is the population mean, and sigma is always in the formula, and that's our population standard deviation. Like z-scores, t-scores are also a conversion of individual scores into a standard form. However, you're going to use this formula when you don't know the population standard deviation. Instead of sigma, you make an estimate of the standard deviation by using your sample. That's the s in the formula. The s is the standard deviation of the sample. If you have a larger sample above that magic number 30, the t distribution and z distribution look pretty much the same. Therefore, you can use either. That said, if you know sigma, it doesn't make a lot of sense to use a sample estimate instead of the real thing, so you could choose to substitute sigma into the equation in place of s. This substitution makes the equation identical to the one for the z-score. The only difference is you'll be looking up the result in the t-table and not the z-table. For sample sizes over 30, you'll get the same result. I hope you found the video helpful. Please take a moment to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.